Now, when it comes to the other videos we have made in this style, the entire trade return finalized format, there isn't really a video we've done in this series that has followed this sort of a formula. And the reason I say that is because when it comes to this trade that we'll be talking about today, in which the return has finally been set in stone, the thing is, there's so many extra intricate details that make this trade so much more convoluted than it needs to be, it really is a trade tree with roots expanding and growing into different directions, weaving and turning into a completely other territory than we had thought was initially being achieved when the trade was made. So, today let's talk about the Montreal Canadiens and one of the most mid-normal not really too significant either way, it wasn't too good, wasn't too bad kind of trades that they have made in their recent history. Let's head over to September 4th, 2021, when the Montreal Canadiens acquired Christian Dvorak. Now, by the way, if you're taking a look at this, yeah, we are on capfriendly.com, but this is the archive.org machine. Their Wayback Machine page still has the Cap Friendly draft format from 2024, which is super helpful because this is like the only formatted website, at least that I know of, that has these draft picks and trades attached to them. Puckpedia just doesn't have it yet, unfortunately. But today we are talking about the Christian Dvorak trade because... With the conclusion of the 2024 NHL Draft, all of the details about this deal, from Montreal's point of view at least, have been fulfilled. Now, Christian Dvorak, if you remember him, when the Montreal Canadiens initially traded for him, he was more so of a replacement, quote-unquote, for Jesperi Kotkaniemi, who, in that 2021 offseason, signed an offer sheet, went over to Carolina, and the Canadians got some compensatory draft picks in exchange. With some of these extra assets, they had acquired Dvorak, who, at that point in his career, was a 25-year-old center who had 31 points in 56 games played with the Arizona Coyotes. He was seen as this two-way guy. He's got point-scoring ability. He's got defensive responsibility. Dvorak, I think, in my mind, will always stand out as the center on the Mitch Marner-Matthew Kachuk line with the OHL's London Knights, where he was one of the best players in the entire OHL in that 20... What was it? 2015-16 season? Yeah, that's what it was. He had 121 points playing alongside of Kachuk and Marner before making his NHL debut the year after. Unfortunately, though, Christian Dvorak, as a much older player, didn't really have the same offensive touch in the NHL as Marner nor Kachuk, but he was still a pretty okay player, and once the Montreal Canadiens acquired him, he had a fairly okay run with the team. I say, okay, had. He's still on the Montreal Canadiens. He's got one more year left in his contract. But in the three seasons he has had with the Habs, he had scored 33 points, 28 points, and 9 points, respectively, in a varying amount of games played. He's okay. Not the best. Not the worst. I think a lot of people sort of have this idea in their minds as to what Dvorak is and always will be. I don't think he's really going to become any better, but he's a perfectly fine middle-to-bottom six transitory two-way center. Now, when we go over to the trade that initially saw Dvorak get sent over to Montreal, it goes as follows here on September 4th, 2021. The Montreal Canadiens acquired Dvorak from the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for a 2022 first-round pick that was conditional and a 2024 second-round pick from Montreal. The conditions on the first-round pick that Arizona acquired go as follows. The better of Montreal or Carolina's 2022 first-round pick, but if either or both are top 10 picks, then Montreal will instead transfer to Arizona the worst of Montreal or Carolina's 2022 first-round picks. The result? Arizona received Carolina's 2022 first-round pick. So if you kind of just break it down, the Canadians had both their first in 2022 and Carolina's first because of the Asperi Kotkaniemi offer sheet. They sent one of these picks over to Arizona, but it wasn't really determined which one it was at the time of the trade. They'd have to wait until the actual draft date, and Montreal said, okay, we'll give you whichever pick of ours versus Carolina's is better, but if one or both of these picks are in the top 10, then we'll give you the worst of the two. Montreal, of course, in 2022, ended up drafting first overall, so the Carolina pick 
27th overall was sent over to Arizona. Now, the pick actually was not used by the Arizona Coyotes. It was actually sent over to the San Jose Sharks on a trade made on the 2022 draft date. San Jose acquired a first, a second, and a second, which of course the first being this Montreal Carolina swapped pick to move up to the 11th overall spot. The Arizona Coyotes selected Connor Geeky, and now he is a prospect in their system. Of course, now with Utah and not Arizona. But either way, Philip Bystead was the prospect that was taken with this first round pick. He's an all right guy, big center, playing in the Swedish league, eventually finding himself over in the AHL. He had a really good cup of coffee with the Barracuda this previous season, so we'll see if he's able to carry over that momentum into 2024 2025. But if you take a look at the other asset that was given to Arizona in this Christian Dvorak trade, it was the Montreal Canadiens 2024 second round pick, 37th overall. Now, this pick was not used by Arizona. Again, this was traded, this time to the LA Kings, for Sean Dursey. The Kings held on to this pick for a matter of three days because after acquiring it on June 24th, 2023, they sent this Montreal second to Winnipeg in the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade. Three days later, baby. So this pick got shopped around quite a bit from Montreal to Arizona to LA over to Winnipeg where the Jets acquired Gabe Velarde, Alex Iafalo, Rasmus Kupari, and this pick. LA, of course, acquired Pierre-Luc Dubois, and the rest is history from their point of view. But with this Montreal Canadiens second round pick, the Winnipeg Jets selected in the 37th overall spot, Alphonse Frey, who's a really interesting defensive prospect. You see, he's a pretty decently sized guy, but what stands out about his overall game is his speed, his puck moving ability, and his offensive potential. He had 33 points in 40 games in the Vecqua Lakers junior team this previous season, and was just under a point per game for Team Sweden at the U18s. The Winnipeg Jets have had their fair share of development on these European defensemen, and Alphonse Frey is a guy that does have some potential. The Elite Prospects 2024 draft guide says this, that he's a graceful, puck-moving defenseman, capable of shifting his weight left and right with the same ease. The defenseman constantly applies deception to his every move and passes. His loose hips and swiveling torso make it hard for the opposition to stay with him. And if you head over to the Elite Prospects draft guide and you try to see what they're saying about Alphonse Frey. They have him more so as a guy that projects similarly to the Vince Dunn kind of profile. That's a pretty good profile, I'd say. And if you're able to get that in the second round, it's certainly a plus. So for the Winnipeg Jets, they got themselves a pretty legit defensive prospect alongside of Velarde, Iafalo, and Kupari for PLD. But of course, going back down the trade tree, this pick was acquired by Arizona first before getting sent over to LA, which all boils down back over to the Christian Dvorak trade with the Montreal Canadiens. So, with all of the layers involved here, the Montreal Canadiens' two picks getting sent over to Arizona in the Dvorak trade, both getting traded in other capacities, it certainly muddies the waters if you wanted to do a pure trade tree. I mean, if you think about Christian Dvorak and all the assets that he got swapped around for and how those assets got swapped and swapped on top of each other, it becomes so convoluted. But that's the beauty of these hockey trades, right? One piece, one asset, one small little pick or a prospect can become so much more under the right circumstances. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Firstly, about Christian Dvorak and how he has performed in Montreal so far. I don't think anybody's going to say that he's been like a huge standout player over the years, but he's been fine, right? A lot of other guys that have more potential and more ceilings and more excitement in their games, but Dvorak has been okay, obviously held back by injuries, but ultimately when he's in the lineup and he's playing his best hockey, he is a more than okay NHL player. It's just the Canadians were kind of forced to get him when the Esperi Kotkaniemi thing went down and they needed to get themselves a replacement center. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Christian Dvorak trade being finalized here. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Ross 99 and bye. <laughs>